Sports. Now, Congressman Aiken, good morning. It's a pleasure to join you. Thank you very much for being here. Before I get to the meat of this issue, let me ask you about a report that surfaced over the last 24 hours or so, Congressman, that your friend and fellow Congressman Paul Ryan, the vice presidential candidate on the Republican side, called you personally to ask you to get out of this race. Did that phone call take place? Yes, Paul Ryan did give me a call, and uh, he felt that I had to make a decision, but he advised me that it would be good for me to step down. And, and what did you say to him? Well, I, I told him that I was going to be looking at this very seriously, trying to weigh all of the different points on this, and uh, that I would make the decision, because it's not about me. It's about trying to do the right thing and standing on principle. I've been listening to the, the leaders of the Republican Party and, of course, a lot of the political, political pundits, and one comment struck me, and Kelly O'Donnell just featured it in her piece, where she, she had someone who said, you are almost alone out there on this. Is that the way you feel? Is that the political reality? And if so, how can you possibly hope to win this race? Well, I don't believe that that's true. Uh, if you think back, it's been more than a year. A number of us ran for the U.S. Senate. We took our messages to the people of the state of Missouri. They had an opportunity to hear us on repeated occasions. Uh, my message was one of standing in principle, not politics, and also on the principles that made America such a great nation, in spite of the fact that we were outspent uh, by an extreme margin the people of the state of Missouri elected me. So this was a decision made by the citizens of our state and not by party bosses. Yeah, but I now the people the of Missouri have had a chance to hear what you said over the last uh, several days, and, and a lot of them are angered. And members of your own party, your, your own presidential candidate, ha have, has said that these remarks were offensive. You said you used one word incorrectly, the word legitimate, when you used the phrase, quote, legitimate rape. Explain to me exactly what you were trying to say. Well, first of all, let me say uh, that legitimate does not re should not be in the context of rape at all. That's completely wrong. And when I understood that uh, I had been offensive to people and that uh, I had misspoken, uh, then I first off apologized. I think that's appropriate. And, uh, and that's uh, because that word just doesn't belong. There is no rape that is legitimate. It's a heinous crime, one of the most serious, and I understand that the victims are harmed for a long time, and I take that very seriously. But uh, while I apologize for the misuse of that word, at the same time I don't apologize for the fact that I am strong uh, in my belief of pro-life. But you, you misused a word and then you compounded the problem by getting the medical facts just plain wrong. When you said that in the case of a forcible rape that, that a, a, or a legitimate rape, a woman's body has the ability to shut down and, and avoid pregnancy. That's just not true. That's correct. That's not true. Uh, I was misinformed and I recognize that. So, so if you are, if you find it hard to articulate uh, your your ideas on a sensitive issue like this, and then you get the medical facts just plain wrong, you know why should you go to the Senate and represent your state in debates over some of these very same same issues? Well, uh, the fact of the matter is, is that uh, I think that anybody who is doing a lot of public speaking uh, can make a mistake. Uh, the people of my state didn't elect somebody who was perfect. They knew I wasn't perfect. Uh, but uh, the, the idea of standing on principle and trying to do the right thing. When you make a mistake, you say you're sorry. You put the politics aside and you do what's the right thing. You, you, you've made some comments over the last 24 or 48 hours, Congressman, to try to explain the comments you made over the weekend. I want to ask you a, a pointed question. Do you believe that many women, and I don't mean just a few, but many women, lie about being raped to gain access to abortions? Well, no, I don't believe that that's the case. And, um, and that was, uh, as I said, the, uh, the comments were uh, misspoken there, particularly on the, the, the word uh, legitimate. Uh, I don't think that's the case. Let's talk just to end on the political realities of this. As I mentioned, Mitt Romney has said that you should step aside. Paul Ryan, you've told us, said that you should step aside. Other members of the Republican leadership have told you to do the same thing. They're worried about control of the Senate. They're worried about their chances of winning the White House. Why should your cause or your ego trump the greater goals of the Republican Party? 
Well, let me say, this is not about me. Uh, this is not about my ego. But it is about the voters of the state of Missouri. They've chosen me because of principles that I stand on and putting principle over politics. I believe that they uh, stand with me on the, a whole host of issues. Congressman Todd Aiken, I appreciate your time this morning. I know you're very busy and I thank you for joining me. And thank you for an opportunity to join you and your wonderful audience. Thanks, Congressman.